Hey everyone, welcome to the Roundtable with Vienna White, Season 1, Episode 28. I'm your host, Millie Rouge, from the band Vienna White here in Edmonton, Alberta. This Roundtable is a Yank Music production. Uh, so thank you all for tuning into the show today. I want to introduce to you our first guest, Ryan. Ryan, can you say hi to the camera and let everyone know where you're from? Hey everybody, uh, I'm from Hawaii. Um, my name is Ryan. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and Greg, can you introduce yourself as well? Hey, I'm Greg from Seattle, Washington. Sounds great. Thank you guys so much. Uh, now, I want to start talking just a little bit about your guys' musical journey so our audience can know a little bit more about you guys as artists and musicians. Um, so, Ryan, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you kind of became an artist in about like three minutes or less, kind of your road and your journey to music and how you kind of got to where you are now? Yeah, so... Uh... I kind of took the roundabout way to uh, start this whole musical journey. Um, I started off playing drums in my church because um, I was in a small church. And my dad was a pastor and he said, hey, we need someone on drums. Go learn that. Uh, so <laughs> so I, I started doing that. And around that time, that was, that was around the time the Guitar Hero was like super popular. Mm. So I was playing that game and I was super good at Guitar Hero. <laughs> and uh, it's funny. But the, uh, the music director at, at the church noticed like me getting really good at that game. And he gifted me a guitar and said, man, if you can wow. play this video game, then you might as well pick up the real thing. And he handed me a guitar and I just like instantly fell in love with it. Uh, my mom has a picture of me like laying in bed, like with the guitar wrapped up in, <laughs> in my arms. Uh, she still has that picture to this day. And she'll, you know, bust it out whenever people are talking about me. Uh, so then uh fast forward um i never had lessons for a while i ended up joining the military and i went on deployments and i would bring my guitar with me everywhere that i go um just just practicing and learning from anybody who could who could teach or play and i'm just watching youtube videos i went to youtube university for a while is what i call it mm -hmm. um <laughs> And just, you know, kept practicing and kept playing and just, you know, falling in love with it and, you know, interacting with other musicians around the world that I was able to, to meet. And um, then I, you know, got involved after, after maybe eight or so years of not having any lessons and just getting involved with people and, and playing, I kind of get involved in the gospel circuit on the island. And I'm, you know, playing in several different churches and now I'm playing R&B gigs and stuff like that. And uh, I eventually end up enrolling at, at, at Berkeley. And that's where I'm at now. So I'm eight days away from graduation. Oh my you know, God. Long, long journey. Uh, <laughs> Congrats. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. And uh, that was four years ago when I enrolled. And I look back at the videos of myself playing then. I'm just like, wow. Yeah. These four years have been jam packed with learning because I, I, was, I was struggling. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a huge improvement <laughs> for sure. Is, huge improvement the school's been awesome and I've met so many so many awesome musicians and just awesome people and then um you know virtual commencement because of COVID but yeah <laughs> silver lining. it's all right yeah I've heard a lot of uh we've had a lot of guests actually that have attended Berkeley or they were currently just graduated so it sounds like it's an amazing school um were you there virtually like through online classes or were you physically there at Berkeley College so I've been yeah, <clears throat> I've been doing the uh, the online college uh, pretty much exclusively. I was a uh, I was approved to go to a study abroad actually over in Spain, but couldn't do it because yeah. <laughs> I was active in the military, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they told me no. Oh, so yeah, that's too bad. So but that's yeah. an amazing experience just in just in itself for sure. Um, I really yeah, quickly wanted awesome. to ask you about the Hawaii kind of music scene. Um, do you find it's quite, like, what's kind of the experience with it compared to other music scenes that maybe you've witnessed? Oh, my goodness. It's very different. Mm -hmm. Very different. Uh, but it's good. You know, Hawaii is, Hawaii is cool. Uh, I've, I've mostly stayed in the, in the gospel circuit, which is kind of interesting here. But, mm -hmm. you know, in the R&B and jazz world and stuff like that, everybody that I've met has been super friendly. Um, I've never, I've never actually had any negative interactions with, with anybody, but it's just small in comparison to, you know, some of the other yeah. cities like, you know, Seattle, for example, I'm yeah. sure has a, a ton of great musicians. Um, mm -hmm. Once you kind of get to know a lot of people in Hawaii, you, you're 
you're pretty good, but there's just not that many venues overall. Right. Yeah, I can I can kind of imagine that being the struggle for sure of being in such a smaller kind of area. Now, uh, Greg, let's actually talk about your musical journey and how you got to where you are today with music. Yeah, so um, maybe I was like four or five. Uh, somehow the uh, bug hits, play guitar. Um, my uh, parents uh, didn't think I was uh, as serious about it um, initially, so they had some hoops to jump through, like uh, playing keyboard, uh, clarinet in the uh, school band, stuff like that. But when I was in uh, sixth grade, uh, my uh, teacher uh, sent out sent out an email saying they have this acoustic um, given away, and uh, nice. we ended up with it. So that's how I started, um, and yeah, uh, went to uh, during high school did a, a dual enrollment program um, with the local community college. Had a really strong uh, jazz program and a music theory uh, program. So that was uh, really helpful in high school. I uh, went off to college and uh, studied electrical engineering. Um, is that uh, made sense for the future? Um, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it really enjoyed the, uh, the technical crossover, um, the application uh, to music, um, understanding you know, how to, uh, gear works and signal processing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, went to uh, LA for a bit um, uh, for engineering career um, at, right after uh, graduating. Uh, played a bunch down there to uh, have met, met some uh, good friends and uh, kind of somewhere between uh, peers and mentors uh, down there for uh, guys to really uh, um, look up to um, uh, playing wise. Um, and yeah, uh, been uh, in the Seattle area and uh, actually a lot of uh, the last year and a half been living uh, in uh, Portland and being back up to Seattle on weekends for. Uh, for shows, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, Seattle area full time for the, uh, for the near future. And uh, awesome. tons of bands in, uh, in college. Then uh, when I went out uh, to LA and now since coming back to the Northwest, um, I've also been uh, trying to ramp up my uh, solo career, um, mm -hmm. to uh, kind of indie rock stuff and just putting the album out at the uh, end of March, um, as well as doing a bunch of hired gun uh, stuff. Uh, a weird turn of events maybe like two years ago got hired to play on a country album and uh nice. didn't didn't spend a lot of time listening to the country i uh, grown up <laughs> it's been like a huge uh, technical challenge like in that kind of chicken picking stuff down um yeah. it's really uh, uh been uh, an eye-opening experience but <laughs> yeah i'm um, looking for more uh, kind of session and hiring hired gun stuff up here uh, promoting my uh my new record yeah, that's amazing. Um, so were you born in uh, Seattle then, or where were you born? Yeah, so I was uh, born um, uh, in a, I'm from a small town uh, west of Seattle. So okay. Allsboro, right. Washington, yeah. Okay, little Norway, awesome. 10,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I actually wow. chatted with a guest the other day, well, it was about a week or two ago, and he's from Egypt, uh, Egypt, Texas. And he told me, he's like, yeah, it's like a super small town. There's 50 people that live here. And I was like, no, Whoa. this guy's totally <laughs> lying. And I looked it up and the population is legitimately like 50 people. It's not meant to like live in. It's really just like a drive by, like they have one postal office and that's like basically it. So nice. I was like, you are not lying. Like there's literally 50 people. <laughs> so I always laugh when people wow. say small town because I'm like, I get it. I, I totally get that. <laughs> Well, thank you much. Thank you both for sharing about your journeys. Um, it kind of lets our audience know a little bit more about you before we chat about our topic. Um, so like I said to them earlier, um, the both of them, when I looked them up on Instagram, they both have this like incredible guitar skills of playing. Um, and I've looked through a lot of artists. And I noticed that was kind of the both of your like dominant um, instruments. So I really want to just chat more about it. It's a very broad subject for sure. Um, but I just kind of wanted to dive into more about your kind of advice and uh, your experience with learning guitar. Um, so my first question for today, how long did it take you to feel comfortable in your guitar playing abilities? I know when you kind of first start out with guitar, it, it takes a few years to really get settled into wanting to play live or play in front of people. So I'm curious to know kind of what your experience was to learn the guitar and how long it took to feel truly comfortable. Um, do you want to start it off, Ryan? Yeah, sure. So this is a, a loaded question. So for me, I got thrown directly into playing live immediately. Like I could, 
I could barely play a C chord and I'm playing in front of people. Um, I don't recommend doing that, but, <laughs> but, you know, it takes, I'd say it takes, you know, a couple of, maybe a, a few years, but mm -hmm. from my experience, it's like much smoother or you, you fast track your, your learning when you're playing with other people. Mm. So that's, that's my experience. Cause I, I did outside of, you know, playing in front of people and I was, you know, kind of thrown to the fire. I, I was a, a bedroom practicer. I'm, you know, listening to backing tracks and just like going over a blue scale for hours a day and just doing that. What, like it was cool. But then when I would even practice the same type of stuff with other people, it just, it just made everything go so much smoother. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say a couple of years, but if you have a teacher, things might go faster or, mm -hmm. you know, when you're playing with, you know, in a group or with other people and other musicians, it's, it, it's much smoother like that. Yeah. And I think it's almost really more, it's more fun to learn that way with like a group and a couple of people, because you really get to just, you get to train your ability to play by ear a lot, I think too. Definitely. Right? And it's a lot of like call and response I find when you learn with other people because you're kind of just playing off of what they play and being like, I can do this, you can do that. Exactly. Right? So I think exactly. It's, that's a really good way to learn. Um, now, Greg, can you tell us a little bit about kind of how long it took you to feel truly comfortable playing guitar? That's a good question. Uh, probably a couple years, but to be honest, I, I and maybe it's a, uh, Maybe it's like this is highlighted during quarantine, but I feel like we all have a ton of time, so I just like really drill right now, and I find like more and more reasons now that are being addressed, but like more and more reasons to not be comfortable playing guitar. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> just finding things that was like awful at, and like, I need to yeah. Yeah, get yeah. better at. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I probably like thought I was like fine playing in front of people after like three years. Yeah, just you know, something like that. And, yeah, you know, I wasn't, but like. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I think, definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think it can take time sometimes. Like you think, you know, like, and yeah, three years is like, I feel ready. And I think at some point it doesn't really matter how long you do practice. You just have to just throw yourself out there and then you will learn through your mistakes, which sometimes is unfortunate, but you will eventually learn for sure. Um, now, my next question is, what artists inspired you both as guitar players? What kind of guitar players really influenced you to maybe want to uh, learn more different, about a different genre or about the instrument itself? Um, Greg, did you want to start this one off? Sure, yeah. Um, initially, I, it was uh, Eric Clapton for me. Uh, in fact, I can point back to uh, Clapton's uh, solo on uh, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, uh, Beatles song of Wood Elm. Um, and since then, I, don't know, I, I went through a Hendrix phase, went through a Zeppelin phase, re, like, like, yeah, so like a year and a half ago, went down the uh, like Albert Lee, Johnny Highland, Daniel Donato rabbit hole, and uh, still kind of going down there. Uh, listened to a ton of um, uh, Derek Trucks, um, uh, Ariel Posen. I don't know if you've heard that, I guess. Yeah, a lot definitely. Of yeah, great yeah I have. He's um, amazing. It's nuts. Um, during quarantine, I guess uh, Tom Bukovac. I don't know, Ryan, if you've been watching the, those uh, YouTube. Mm -mm. Uh, no. yeah. yeah, great session player in Nashville. Um, yeah, I don't know, probably probably focused more on uh, like more uh, melodic guys um, as of late. And, uh, and you know, like uh, who else? I guess like Mike Campbell uh, in the Heartbreakers is a great example. Um, but yeah, they're you know, yeah. all, all the shredders to pay attention to yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a killer list. Uh, I think I think for me, I, uh, I, I started off more on the kind of melodic phase and um, it's really kind of broad. Like I, I wasn't really big. I, I, of course, Clapton, when you first pick up a guitar, Clapton, like the, all the songs I started off listening to were, were Clapton. And uh, my wife loves, loves kind of like local, like kind of softer music. So I, I went through a Jack Johnson phase oh. um, where I'm learning songs like Banana Pancakes and Better mm. Together. Uh, <laughs> then I, I'm, you know, like R&B. So people like Carrie Marshall, that's like my 
from on the guitar side, Kerry Marshall's like my guitar idol. Like I've been listening and trying to learn and play like him for forever. That's actually how I started. And I remember learning chords from Ashley Juno on, on YouTube. Uh, so a lot of like kind of smaller time, uh, not smaller, but not like big artists. Yeah. So people like Kerry Marshall and Ashley Juno, um, of course, Clapton, of course. I went through a Hendrix phase as, as well. Uh, I was big on Jack White uh, yes. from the White Stripes. Um, just love that. I went through a Foo Fighters phase. <laughs> so just learning all of their tunes. Yeah. Uh, those those are kind of like my my guitar idols for sure. Yeah, that's like a oh, really well-versed genre. Chris Payton and Isaiah <laughs> Sharkey and John Mayer. Mm, that's yeah, a good those, one. Yeah. those are my guys. <laughs> Yeah, there's like surprisingly so many extremely talented guitar players. I think sometimes can be, you know, kind of tucked under the rug because people aren't really thinking about the guitar players. They're thinking more about the lead singer of the band or whatnot. So um, this actually kind of leads into my next question. Um, Do you think that guitar players that play in bands are typically drowned out by other musicians or instruments, I should say, um, in the band? Or do you think that they have their certain place within a band that lets them stand out? So I know like when I watch a live concert, for example, um, I typically look at all instruments kind of separately as their own and take some time to like watch each uh, musician play. But do you find that being a guitar player, sometimes you almost feel drowned out? Because I know drums is such a huge instrument and being a lead singer is such a huge thing because you're center stage. How do you feel you kind of fit in as a guitar player when you're playing with a band or a bigger group? How do you kind of feel you set yourself apart? Um, now, Greg, I want to ask you first, because I know you've played in quite a few bands and uh, you've had your experience with this. Yeah, it totally uh, depends on the genre. Um, exactly. So, I, yeah, I've so played a ton of uh, country rock gigs in like the last year and a half, mm-hmm. and those are super lead focused. Maybe it's maybe it's just the band, but uh, and for that that kind of stuff, when you're playing like three to four hours. Um, you can have a lot of need to fill a lot of time and kind of uh, vamping stuff and you know just uh, building up solos and stuff like that. Um, as far as uh, also play in a in a pop group um, called Club Collective and uh, that stuff is definitely more part focused and definitely more about um, grooving. So yeah, um, I mean I wouldn't say I ever feel drowned out in fact it's almost uh, more comfortable um when you're just there to groove and you're you're just there to lay down a part and that can be a a better um or it's easier to have i think a a better experience that way it takes some discipline but it's it's uh yeah yeah different different sides of the coin yeah. Now, Ryan, you've played in more gospel kind of areas and more in the R&B jazz. So your kind of genre is the opposite of Greg's. How do you feel that really yeah. well? The genre is, I was, I was going to chime in on that. The genre mm. is 100% the, the focus on it in that space because right. it's easy in, uh, it's, it's funny. So in, in like Christian music in general, there's like this divide between like contemporary and, and like urban gospel. And in contemporary, guitars are like really heavy focused. Like I'm getting a whole lot of play, solos and yeah. just the rhythms. And it's it's really guitar centered. So it's really um, just like, like Greg was saying with classic rock, like it's the guitar is kind of getting a lot of focus. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the on the gospel side, the focus is oh, a lot more on the keyboard than the guitar. But it's it's not like being drowned out because the guitar adds a adds like a lot of flavor Mm -hmm. to the music so if you don't you know you don't have a guitar you're not gonna get into a lot of the chicken picking and the grooves and the solos and the lead lines i mean it's it's kind of just like finding your space and um not trying to overpower the music but you know create something that's fun Mm -hmm. absolutely you know so getting drowned out like i did have a, a time when i was starting to feel like that and I remember talking with somebody about it. I was talking with my my MD, and his name was Corey, and it was just like, just play, man. <laughs> and it was it was really more in my head, like more mindset, like yeah. Yeah, just play. And I was I was kind of like sitting back a little bit, so I, I started to kind of play more. And 
Mm-hmm. The more I played, the more the rest of the band was able to feed off of me the same way I was feeding off of them. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point, actually. When you do kind of put yourself, even as a, I, I myself, my main instrument is really my voice, but I do play piano and guitar. Um, but the more you kind of put yourself into the band and the more you're providing the energy, it totally does make a huge shift for all of the band, which I think definitely bands need to consider that when they're playing or when they're rehearsing, like the more effort we all put together, the show itself or the performance will be like a hundred times better. Right. So thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that guys. Um, so I'm curious to know what are some of your warm up techniques and care in general for your guitar when you're playing, what are some kind of things like some ground rules or some techniques or warm ups that you use to kind of stay mobile as a guitar player, I should say. Uh, Greg, did you want to start it off? Um, like practice wise or like before a yeah, show? Yeah, practice or? wise or even like either both actually. Okay, um, let's see. It's kind of like various uh, like picking exercises. Mm-hmm. As far as, yeah, like getting loose, I, I think that's pretty, pretty important. Um, I try to uh, I just like groove a bit with a, with a click and um, like a particular like stretching exercise for my hands out on my feet, this thing called the, like spider drill. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, do that a lot. I don't know. Uh, hand strengthen thing, like, yeah, you just go like this, go to one string at a time. Mm-hmm. As far as, yeah. I don't know, I, I feel like a big part, part for me, like when I know I'm loose, like I can really feel like a clean point of contact on my picking hand and like my, my fingers. Then, uh, then like when I, in my thumb, when I, if I'm tucking the pick behind uh, my fingers, also then as far as like really having uh, clean contact on my uh, fretting hand as well. So yeah. it's like some combination of like, running scales but mostly just like kind of like getting used to having the strings underneath my hand again great so, yeah and how yeah, about even yourself? though it's like a daily thing but like a, yeah yeah no time. absolutely that's very true yeah what about yourself ryan what are some kind of ways you prepare yourself to play yeah so i used to not warm up at all and i didn't know that that was a big deal um yeah. i noticed my bass player always warming up and he's you know he's phenomenal uh but then uh i watched i was doing the uh Rock Discipline DVD from uh, John Petrucci a couple of, it was a couple of years ago I was doing this and the whole first like 20, 30 minutes of the, mo- of the video is just talking about warmups. Mm-hmm. And uh, ever since, you know, I see a huge difference. It's, a, it's actually really important. So I stretch, um, you know, stretch my shoulder and my forearm and my wrist. And then I do like some finger exercises just to kind of like spread my hands out and uh, then I do just like some rhythm stuff with the click and kind of, and then I, I have a uh, arpeggio exercise that I, I took from a guy on Instagram named uh, Nicholas Vienaglu. And I, uh, I just took this arpeggio exercise. It's just going from spread triads all throughout the neck, just to kind of get a feel on the instrument. Just like Greg was saying, just touching the instrument and getting your fingers ready. Yeah. Uh, I really don't think it's, it's, it's good to have your first time you know, touching the instrument be when you're, you know, getting on the bandstand, you know, you should, (laughs) I I definitely try to spend a a good couple of minutes just warming up, especially if I can do it with a click to kind of get those rhythms Mm -hmm. uh, just in my head already, because so much of the music I play is is groove based, that you just have to have like a feel for the rhythm already, so I I try to already kind of have that going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's really important, some artists sometimes don't uh, consider how important warming up is, but it's pretty obvious. It's the same thing with sports. You wouldn't go out in a field and just play a full like FIFA World Cup game. You'd obviously stretch before exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you would do such high intensity movement. So I think it's, it's really important. Um, so I, I'm curious to know what was the most difficult part of guitar that took you a while to learn? I know for myself, um, when I was first playing guitar, for me, it was just getting the amount of pressure uh, for a chord for it not to sound like absolute garbage. So I'm curious to know uh, what things you guys struggled with when you first started playing with guitar. What were the things that took you a long, long time to just kind of get down and get perfect, if you will? Um, did you want to start off, Ryan? Sure. Um, let's see. The hardest thing for me to get down was, um, i say getting my thumb to separate rhythms from the rest of my hand. Mm-hmm. 
So just kind of getting like an automatic bass with my thumb, which was which is really important when you're doing like finger style stuff. Uh, I don't know why that was such such a difficult thing for me, but it, it was, and I, it's probably because I wasn't using a metronome. Mm. So that I'd say that I didn't I didn't really struggle with bar chords or anything like that. That kind of just just worked out. But yeah. I, I would definitely say kind of finger style and, and rhythm, just getting like rhythms in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that might might have been the hardest thing for me. Yeah, it's a little bit different than a rock band, for sure. <laughs> it's a little yeah, bit yeah. different, the rhythm. <laughs> yeah, how about, definitely. How about yourself, Greg? What was something you kind of had to overcome with guitar? Yeah, I think time has been a big thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, as Ryan was saying, just uh, staying kind of disciplined with uh, metronome exercises and getting right. creative with that kind of stuff has uh, helped a bunch. Um same same thing as far as uh, finger independence um yeah and uh i'm 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 sure i had like the same like bar chord initial struggles absolutely positive um you're just like not as uh front and center in my mind at the moment right. uh vibrato is a big thing or it just takes mm-hmm. a while um mm-hmm. yeah uh yeah, there's all, all sorts of like finger independence things, but it, it, overall, like music wise, um, uh, it's definitely uh, been time, or at least that's uh, something that I've noticed in like the difference between like, re- like over the years, like recordings that I play on or make um, versus, um, uh, you know, stuff that's at the top of the charts. It, you know, yeah. definitely got to get, get better at a groove for sure. Um, yeah. but it's a lifelong struggle. Yeah, and that's actually a very good point. There's <laughs> no point where you really, like, you're always constantly learning, I think, with instruments, no matter how good you think you are, you are definitely, definitely. always still learning, right? Um, so my last question, actually, for today, what advice would you give to a new artist who's first starting out with guitar? Um, this can be really anything, any type of advice. What advice would you give to someone who's like, I'm just starting out? What advice would you give them? Um, Ryan, did you want to start it off? Yeah, absolutely. So I... This is this is like a really big deal to me. So <laughs> the guitar, I don't care what anyone says, is the most fun instrument. Yeah. That's it. The guitar is just the most fun instrument, which is a gift and a curse. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing about the guitar is you sit at the practice room, you know, you're in the shed and you're going to say, I'm going to have a productive practice. I'm going to learn X, Y, and Z. You start for five minutes and then you just start noodling on a, on a blues scale for 45 minutes and you walk away and that just isn't a productive practice. <laughs> and, and the fun of playing the instrument can distract you from actually like improving on the instrument because you just spend a lot of time noodling. And uh, this is advice that was given to me a couple of years ago by one of my teachers, but uh, I was actually going to chime in when, when Greg was talking about this. Having a metronome playing during your practice helps your mind to focus. Mm -hmm. So I I started just having my metronome playing and it would kind of remind me that, hey, I actually have a like a learning objective here. Like I want to actually spend some time practicing and not just noodling. And then I can, you know, noodle and and do whatever at the end. But just actually practice and be patient with yourself. You know, don't you know get too hard on yourself because learning an instrument is a lifelong journey. I mean, just like Greg said earlier, I've I've got so much stuff that I am working on right now to, that I need to improve. And there's a million players out there that, that I think are better than myself, but it's just always, you know, stuff to practice. So just actually have productive practice sessions and, you know, improvement comes over time. Mm -hmm. And Greg. Yeah. uh, It's a big question. Um, I think practicing with a metronome is really important. Um, I think uh, not going like down, though, although I'm like absolutely guilty of this, not going down rabbit holes on gear is important, although gear is important. <laughs> guys who you think have like the sick gear, they actually had just a really good guitarist and like it will sound <laughs> sick through like a line six spider four and like, yeah. Um, Let's see, what else? Oh, uh, ear training. So um, when I was probably in like seventh grade, um, like guitar bug had recently bit me, or recently I had a guitar, you know, play. And uh, 
Uh, but, you know, you can't have the guitar in your hand all the time. So I think like mental practice is extremely important. And I don't have a perfect pitch. Um, a lot of us don't have a perfect pitch. But like when you're listening to something on the radio, just start thinking like like how this is like a big thing. It's like it's like one bite at a time. But like, what are the chord changes involved in this song? Like, it, let's like guess that it's in C. You know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Like, what are the chord changes involved in this song? How can I like visualize the fretboard in your head? Sing it in your head. You gotta like bridge that gap between like the fretboard and like what you're actually trying to get out um, yeah. musically. And so even just like thinking about thinking about a song, I feel like there's a lot of like valuable. Um, it's like weird when you don't talk to people, um, but you know, like, hey, one, one day like you'll have a okay ear and it'll it'll pay off. But like, I think that like kind of yeah. mental practice stuff is like super super important. Yeah, that was actually some really great advice from the both of you. So thank you for sharing that. Um, that was our last question for the day. We are out of time. I'm really thankful that I had you both on today. Um, if you guys are at home watching the round table with Deanna White on YouTube, uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you're notified about all of our shows. Uh, we post Monday to Friday, and we also post our podcast uh, Monday to Friday as well. Uh, so before we head out here, could I get you all just one more time to say uh, your full stage name and where our audience can find you on social media? Um, so Greg, can you start it off? Yep, I'm Greg Warrens. Um, you can look me up on Instagram. It's just Greg Warrens. Um, same on uh, Spotify, um, and Apple Music, whatever streamer. And just uh, had a new record come out at the end of March and all under Greg Warrens. Fantastic. And Ryan? Right, so my name is Ryan. You can find me all over the internet as Sir Malone. Uh, just Sir underscore Malone or Sir Malone underscore. If you just type in Sir Malone, you'll find me anywhere. Uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Um, and I've got a, uh, my first debut EP is gonna be releasing next Thursday. So I'll be, I'll be plugging that in, giving my, my shameless plug on that. Uh, it's gonna be called Rabbit Holes. And that's a, uh, special to me because every tune I've, I've ever worked on started off as a rabbit hole that I just kind of dug into. That's fantastic. Well, I can't wait to listen to both of your music. Uh, thank you so much for being here today and it was great meeting you both. Have a great day. Uh, thank, thank you for having <laughs> us. Nice to meet you, Ryan. Yeah, good to meet you too.